Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, watching, all that stuff. I appreciate it. I do hope you're staying safe, having fun out there if you're getting out there at all, and um, staying healthy, of course. Thanks for coming by, and if you're new here, my name is Jim. Nice to meet you, and I make videos about editing your photos using different software products. I love Luminar 4. I'm in Luminar 4 today, as I say quite often in these videos, and what I'm doing, I'm doing um, like a, I'm gonna call it a trick. I don't know if it's really a trick. It's not like super crazy or oh my God, but it's a nice little tip that um, I've been experimenting with that's helping me out in terms of getting kind of the right look. And it comes down to a lot of time, I like color, just to be clear. If you're new here, you may not know that, but I like color. Um, but sometimes I'll be pushing the colors and I'll kind of go too far. So this, this tip has allowed me to kind of get a little bit of color and then get a little bit more and get a little bit more and kind of incrementally increase color without kind of going over the top. It'll apply to any kind of edit. Let me jump into the photo and show you. Here's my base photo now. This is a sunset shot. I want to accentuate those colors. And of course, it's easy to come over here to do this kind of stuff with saturation and vibrance and get over the top really quick. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start with the light tool. I'm going to leave that uh, temperature and tint where they are. I'm going to do a little bit of smart contrast, like, you know, maybe 25. I'm going to pull the highlights down just a smidge and lift the shadows just a smidge as well. Not going to do anything in advanced settings. I'm going to pop over to AI Enhance and I'm going to give Accent AI like, you know, let's say like a 30. Okay, so, so far all I've done is that. There's my base photo and there's my current photo. I should add that I did a slight crop to this photo prior to starting the video. I need to take a few things out. I see a couple of spots on this side in the sky, see a couple of spots over here, and I want to take these little treetops out. I was up on a hill looking down on this lake. This is Lake Marble Falls in Marble Falls, Texas. Um, so anyway, it was a beautiful sunset as you can see. I'll fix that stuff later. This is where I'm talking about fixing colors and enhancing them. But again, it works for anything that you do. So what I'm going to do is I made those adjustments on the base layer. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer, and then I'm going to get in here and start playing with the edits that I really want to play with. First thing is I'm going to go to uh, AI structure, and I'm going to go like a negative 35 or something. And all that is is I'm just softening up the whole photo. I like that look in skies, especially sunset skies. Unless they're super dramatic for some reason, I might add, them, uh, add a little bit of structure to them, which would be positive. But generally speaking, I kind of like them to. I kind of like to use a negative structure on skies and water. That's you know, 85% of the photo is sky and water, so it's working for me there. And then I'm going to go over here to saturation and vibrance, and I'm going to do like a, a 23 or something on both of these. And you can see it's starting to pop the color a little bit, of course because I added saturation and vibrance. Now I'm going to come to Landscape Enhancer and give Golden Hour a pretty good uh, shove here to the right. So I think I was at like 55 or something like that. But anyway, uh, this layer, let me go to this layer. If you look at the before and after, there's the before and there's the after. I've got a pretty nice pop of color, but it's, it's getting a little bit, pro, uh, uh, maybe a little bit intense is the word, in the skies. And so this is where I like to use a luminosity mask. So I'm going to say edit mask and click on luminosity. And there you go. So let me show you. There's a before this layer and after. A luminosity mask gives you the ability to do a much more subtle enhancement to the photo. But that's not the trick, actually. So let me back up. If you're not familiar with a luminosity mask, let me go show you what it looks like. And that's what it looks like. A luminosity mask, as the name implies, it's a mask and it's built automatically based on luminosity values, which you can think of as brightness levels. The brighter parts of the photo get more of the mask, the darker parts of the photo get less. So you can see the darker parts of the photo, like the buildings and the land over here, got almost none of the mask. The mask is represented by the pink color that shows up when I click on this eyeball, right? Um, the blue, darker part of the sky didn't get a whole lot. The bright parts over here, they got a lot of that pink color, the mask. And so what that means is all the adjustments I did on this layer are applying more heavily where you have more of this pinkish red color and less heavily where you have very little of it. So in other words, this sky over here is getting a whole lot more of the adjustment. The blue sky is getting some. This tree and that land are not getting very much and the water is getting some. It's a great way to subtly add an enhancement to your photo. So that's a luminosity mask. And um, that's what I did. And so I love that, but here's what I'm talking about. Here's my little tip, and that is sometimes I'm looking at these and I'm like, 
you know, I like it, but I, I want a little bit more. I just want a little bit more. And I'm, I'm afraid if I go add an adjustment layer and start moving the sliders, it's gonna get to be too much. So here's the tip. That is, go to these three little dots and just say duplicate layer. And there you go. All it did is it took all the adjustments on that adjustment layer one down here, including the luminosity mask, and it just made an exact copy of them and it places it on top of them. So uh, if I turn that off, there it is before, that's the base layer adjustment, adjustment layer one with you know some of the color adjustments and the luminosity mask. Um, and then here it is again. Now it's a lot more intense. So here's part of the tip. I usually take this one down to about 50. So I duplicated that, including the luminosity mask, which allows you to get a more subtle implementation. And then I made it more, more subtle, more, yeah, more subtle, even subtler, whatever, um, by decreasing the adjustment amount. And I think that works really well for me. I'm getting a nice pop of color without overdoing it. And in fact, I've even done that multiple times where I'll go and duplicate the layer again. And this time, it's taken that layer at 50 and dropping it on there. And now I'm taking that layer and pulling it down to 25. And so I've basically got my base layer, a couple of minor edits, adjustment layer one, which is a full opacity luminosity mask on those adjustments, copy of adjustment layer one, which is those uh, adjustments, luminosity mask at 50% opacity, and then the copy of the copy of adjustment layer one, which is the luminosity mask on the adjustments at 25% opacity. And I think that's given me a really lovely sunset. There's the before and the after. This is where I go in and do some refinements. And this is my new adjustment layer. I'll come in here and what I'll do in this case is I'll go to color. I'm gonna go to blue. I'm gonna take the saturation of the blue down a little bit. And I might take the orange down a little bit as well, just because I don't want it to be too intense. And just those minor uh, edits just here in the color tab, there's before, blue's a little bit more intense and the orange is as well. And after, I've tamed those a little bit. And then I may come into AI structure and just soften that up one more time. Again, personal preference, this is what I like to do. But if you take a look at that, these additional incremental layers, they're subtle because the adjustments aren't that great. And then on top of that, each layer has a luminosity mask. And then my subsequent layers have a reduced opacity luminosity mask. So the first luminosity mask layers at 100, second one's at 50, third one's at 25. So I'm stacking it incrementally, but with these minor adjustments because of the luminosity mask and the opacity reduction. Then I come in with my final adjustment layer and make some final updates or edits to the photo. And that's my final photo. Let me show you, there's the before. You can tell it's a beautiful sunset, but it's a raw file and a lot of the colors kind of lost and after, and if I do the sliding uh, window here, you can see I amped up the color. I got some nice looking stuff. I think it's very soft because I use negative structure every time basically, um, but it's got some nice color pop in it that's not really over the top. Now I could do lots of things from here. I could come in light tool, maybe change the temperature, maybe pull the tint a little bit to the right. If I wanted to get a little bit more of that sunset look, which adds a little bit of pink, which I'm kind of liking. Um, but it's given me great control over the photo by using lower opacity uh, luminosity mask layers each time and reducing that amount. So that's the tip, that's the trick. It's fun, try it on your photos. I'm gonna go clean up these spots and I think I've got a lovely photo. So I hope that you find that helpful, my friends. Thanks for checking this out. That's just a fun little tip that you can employ. And it's a great way to incrementally uh, improve or enhance your photo without really going over the top. Because let's face it, it's easy sometimes to go over the top with our edits. That's why I made that video. Um, but this was another tip or trick that I thought of I wanted to share. Thanks for watching, my friends. I hope you're doing super well. Staying safe. I'll see you soon. Take care and adios.